Andy here with Akai Corp. Welcome back. Today we're going to continue on with the cross section of an induction motor. We left off with this image showing where the voltages were on induction motor if we grounded the case. The case itself is grounded, so is the stator, but the actual rotor and shaft are indeterminate in voltage, as is the inner race of the bearings and the bearings themselves. So let's continue on from there and uh, get started. This is our induction motor, but it's not the whole story. Typically, in the past, induction motors were run off of three-phase 60 hertz or 50 hertz voltage, a perfect sine wave. But with advances in technology and the invention of the insulated gate bipolar transistor, or IGBT, and the device that is typically used now for driving most induction motors is the variable frequency drive. So let's just zoom out here a little bit. Let's take a look at how our motor actually inter interacts with a variable frequency drive. And to do that, we need to talk a little bit about what a variable frequency drive is and how it works. All right, so we've zoomed out a bit. We've got our electric motor here, our induction motor, and now we're gonna drive it. So a variable frequency drive, this block that we have right here, will take a sine wave of some voltage, for instance, 240, 600, 400, and create a sine wave on the outside. And you kind of ask yourself, why would you do that? Well, the big advantage of a variable frequency drive is that it can create a different frequency out of the uh, drive. So you might feed in 60 hertz, but you can get out anywhere from 10 up to 120 uh, hertz in terms of uh, output frequency. This allows you to control the uh, speed of the motor and also the amount of torque that's put out. So with a variable frequency drive, you get a lot of control over the induction motor. And this has opened up a whole raft of applications. So for instance, uh, fans that need to run at a constant speed or need to slow down when they uh, when they don't have as much uh, load to move. You'll find them all through electric vehicles, water pumps, slow startup motors, so you're not actually putting a whole bunch of torque out at once. And so you bring these things up slowly. So ramp up and ramp down speeds. So they're a big deal and uh, they've revolutionized the induction motor industry and motors and motor industry in general. So let's take a look quickly at what's inside one. Inside a variable frequency drive, we'll take our sine wave and rectify it, give us a rectified uh, sine wave. We will filter that so that we end up with a very high DC voltage. And then with a microcontroller and our IGBTs and there are other uh, silicone devices now that are being used, we chop up this DC voltage into very small spikes. And if we put one spike with some spacing in between it, then we're only creating a lower voltage. And as we increase the duty cycle, we create more of that sine wave and then fall off. And we do that both on the positive half of the cycle and the negative half of the cycle. But basically we pulse width modulate this DC voltage out um, so that we can create a pseudo sine wave. And that's an important consideration with our electric motor, because when you create a pseudo sine wave, you are creating a lot of these very high frequency spikes um, that are being applied to the uh, stator windings. Now that's a really simplified description of a variable frequency drive, but the important part to remember out of this is that we're taking nice looking sine wave and turning it into a rather chopped up, ugly looking sine wave. And we're gonna feed that into our motor. So now let's uh, put our variable frequency drive away and go back to our motor. All right, we have our motor back front and center. So now let's talk about what happens when we feed uh, variable frequency drive voltages uh, into this motor. The first thing that happens is we can create capacitive coupling and eddy currents induced into the rotor. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, depending upon the geometry of the motor and how the VFD is driving the load on the motor, we can induce eddy currents into the rotor on this motor. Now, the laminations go a long way to reducing that, but still we are able to do, introduce some eddy currents into the actual rotor. So when eddy currents are introduced into the rotor, you can think of them as a small battery stacked on top of each other. Each one of those laminations has a little battery attached to it. And those currents add up and they want to uh, circulate through that rotor. So they need a path to leave the rotor and they need a path to come back in. Typically eddy currents in motors happen in larger motors. We're talking 200 horsepower and up, but depending upon geometry and configuration of the motor, it can happen in lower 
lower horsepower motors also. The other phenomenon that occurs here is that we end up with capacitive coupling between the stator and the rotor. This is because we are hitting the stator windings with a very fast rising waveform. And a fast rising waveform will tend to couple a voltage onto the rotor. And of course, remember, the rotor is an insulated item. So whatever ends up being coupled onto there stays on there. The other phenomena that occurs on an induction motor when we're using VFDs is capacitive coupling of voltages from the stator onto the rotor. When we're using a VFD drive, we're ending up putting a very fast rise time voltage onto the stator windings. This can have the effect of capacitively coupling a voltage onto the rotor. Now remember the rotor is isolated, so it looks just like the plate of a capacitor and that voltage is gonna stay there until something removes it. So between the capacitive coupling between the stator and the rotor and then eddy currents that are induced into the rotor, we end up with a couple phenomenon that is going to drive the voltage of the rotor and the shaft to some voltage that uh, is gonna be very difficult to determine but can be measured. So for this uh, discussion here, we're going to say that we're working in the positive half of the sine wave and that the voltage that's been induced or coupled onto the rotor shaft and rotor is going to be positive. So we've removed the question marks out of here and we put in positive just to clean it up a little bit. And just to make it a little easier to see, we're going to remove our drivers of eddy current and capacitive coupling and just leave us with this voltage on our shaft. Now you're going to notice here that we end up with a positive voltage voltage on the inner race and a negative voltage on the uh, outer race of the motor. Okay, so when we zoom into our bearing, we see we've got positive shaft voltage, negative outer race voltage, and uh, if that voltage builds up enough, we're going to end up with a spark. And that spark is going to basically discharge the rotor voltage into the ground. Now every time that spark happens, we literally evaporate a little piece of the bearing in the race. This phenomenon is known as electrical discharge machining and it's used to actually cut metal on a regular basis. And you can cut an eight inch block of steel uh, with a very low voltage. So whenever we have this voltage discharge, we're actually creating a little bit of damage on each, on each bearing face and race face. And this little damage that we do seems insignificant because it's microscopic, but it can happen thousands of times a second. So even though it is not a lot of damage, it adds up pretty quick. And it doesn't take very long for us to completely damage the bearing in the race. And that's gonna look like fluting on the race and frosting on the bearing. Fluting looks like this uh, pattern uh, that's on the race. You can see it, whereas it should be shiny and smooth you end up with this frosted uh, pattern on the, on the uh, race. Now it's interesting to note that it doesn't happen always and it doesn't happen at all different speeds and it doesn't happen with all variable frequency drives. But it is be, it's a very common phenomenon that happens when you're running a variable frequency drive with a motor. So now that we've covered off that and what happens to the motor, let's talk about some solutions around how to, how to repair that. The solution that we offer here, or one of the solutions we offer here, is to use a motor shaft grounding module. The concept of that is simple. We don't want to have an indeterminate voltage on the rotor. We want to know what that voltage is. So what we want to do is in some form, ground that rotor back to the case. And then that way, keep all the potentials on the rotor and the case at the same. If the potentials between the rotor and the case are the same, then there's no opportunity to create a spark between the bearing and the case. With the addition of a motor shaft grounding module, shown there in gold on the shaft, we're able to create a path from the shaft into the motor shaft grounding module. Now you'll notice that the motor shaft grounding module is standing away from the uh, thicker part of the shaft. And that's because you typically need to place that someplace between the end bell and where you have the keyway on the motor. It all depends upon the configuration of your motor, the physical setup. To do that, we add a spacer in this case that allows us to put the motor shaft grounding module onto a spot that is clear of any other obstructions. When we make that electrical connection between the shaft and the end bell, 
and therefore into the ground in the case. Then the path for the shaft voltage is no longer through the bearings, but is through the motor shaft grounding module. Once you recreate this path, then the shaft voltage is redirected. And at that point, then we no longer generate sparks on our bearings. Unfortunately, putting a motor shaft grounding module onto the shaft after bearing damage doesn't help your bearings. But if it's installed before the VFD is installed on the motor on the new motor or when the bearings replaced, the motor shaft grounding module will protect the bearings. And then you end up with a system that you no longer have to deal with uh, reduced bearing life on your bearings. So I think that covers off induction motors, how they end up with shaft voltages, and how a motor shaft grounding module will protect the bearings and make sure that they live up to their specified service life. Thanks for watching.